We ask Allah to grant strength to our brothers and sisters in Gaza and accept their sacrifices. May he shower them with his mercy, protect them, and make their faith a source of fortification. We also ask Allah to forgive us for our shortcomings and remind ourselves of our weaknesses. In times like these, our faith is tested. These trials and tribulations are a means through which our Iman, faith, is manifested and demonstrated. It is only through faith in Allah that we find hope during dark times and that optimism is possible when worldly help seems far away. Allah reminds us in the Quran, did you think you will enter Jannah for free? Trials and hardships just like those faced by the generations before us are part of the path to paradise. The early Muslims endured persecution, bloodshed, and loss. They too asked, where is the help of Allah? Allah's response was clear. Jannah is not cheap. It requires patience and perseverance. His help and victory only come after enduring trials. Our Prophet, peace be upon him, reminded us to always think good thoughts of Allah. For those who have lost their lives, we have hope and comfort in knowing they are in a better place with Allah, far from the hardships of this world. They are not dead. Their lives now are more real and meaningful than ours. We make dua for them, and for those who remain, we ask Allah to grant them patience and strength. As for those who commit oppression, we are reminded that Allah is not unaware of their deeds. He may delay their reckoning, but He never lets go of them. Our Prophet, peace be upon him, said that sometimes Allah allows the oppressors some leeway, but eventually He holds them to a severe account. For those suffering, there are two outcomes. Either they will pass on, and Allah will exact His justice on their behalf, or they will live to see the oppressor's downfall in this world. Our job is to hold on to what Allah has given us and remain steadfast. There is wisdom in every calamity, even when it seems painful. The Qur'an and the teachings of our Prophet, peace be upon him, consistently show that every trial has a greater benefit for the Ummah. Even when we face setbacks, Allah reminds us that what appears to be a defeat might actually be a victory in disguise. In moments of hardship, such as the battles faced by the early Muslims, these difficulties revealed the true believers from the hypocrites and strengthened the community. Today we must call out those who stand silent in the face of oppression. It's time to see who supports the oppressed and who sides with the oppressors. It is a blessing in disguise to witness who stands with the Ummah and who turns their back. Silence in the face of injustice is deafening and must be named. To normalize relations with the oppressors or remain indifferent to the plight of our brothers and sisters is to betray one of the most crucial causes of the Ummah. We also call upon our leaders and those in positions of power, especially those in the West, to use their influence for good. It is shameful for them to remain silent when their voices are needed the most. Their power and influence will be questioned by Allah on the Day of Judgment, and it is their duty to stand up against tyranny and oppression. Now some people may blame the oppressed, saying their suffering is due to their own sins or differences in understanding Islam. But this is a misguided and simplistic way of thinking. How can we blame those who are bombed and starved for simply following a different path within Islam? We should focus on the real oppressors, the occupiers, and those committing these atrocities. There is no single solution, but diversity in our efforts is beneficial. While personal spirituality and increasing our faith are essential, they must be paired with actions, campaigning, media activism, political lobbying, and humanitarian work. We cannot sit back and do nothing. Allah's help will come, but we must lay the foundation for that victory. Our faith gives us hope, and with patience, we strive for a future where justice prevails. In addition to increasing our spiritual resolve, we must engage in practical, meaningful actions. This means using every resource we have, our voices, our platforms, our networks to raise awareness, advocate for justice, and support those who are suffering. Public opinion, media presence, and political activism are more powerful than we often realize. 
We are witnessing a global shift. For the first time, the voices of the oppressed, particularly the Palestinians, are being amplified more than ever. The younger generations, both Muslim and non-Muslim, are waking up to the reality of the situation. Protests are happening worldwide, and people of various backgrounds are calling for justice. Even in places where such support was once unthinkable, like within the Jewish community, there is a growing resistance to the oppressive regime. This shows that public opinion is changing, and we must continue to push this momentum forward. For those of us living in countries that directly support the oppressors, we carry a unique responsibility. Our taxes, our policies, and our political systems play a role in what happens on the ground. We have to speak up. We have to educate those around us and influence change from within. We cannot underestimate the power of collective effort. If each of us commits to changing the perspectives of just a handful of people, we can create a ripple effect. That's how movements grow. It may not happen overnight, but history has shown us that change comes from consistent and unified efforts. Remember, Allah tests us all in different ways. For some, it's through direct hardships, and for others, it's through the privilege and power they hold. Our test, especially for those of us living in relative comfort, is to use our blessings to support our brothers and sisters in need. To stay silent is to fail that test. And as we face these challenges, we hold on to hope. We are people of optimism rooted in our Iman. We believe firmly that Allah's help will come, even if it takes time. It's not about when the victory will happen, but rather about staying firm in our efforts and intentions. Our duty is to keep striving, knowing that every prayer, every dua, every act of kindness, and every moment of speaking up contributes to a greater cause. So brothers and sisters, let's continue to be a voice for the voiceless. Let's educate, advocate, and most importantly, pray for justice. And never forget, while the path is long and difficult, the destination is worth every bit of the struggle. The help of Allah is near, and with patience and unity, we will see it unfold. May Allah grant us the strength to remain steadfast, the wisdom to act righteously, and the courage to face every challenge with unwavering faith. And while we take these steps, let's remember the power of unity. We are an Ummah, a community that is strong when we come together despite our differences. When we unite in our hearts, intentions, and actions, we become a force that is difficult to break. This unity is not just about a shared cause. It's about shared faith and shared hope. Our strength lies in our diversity, in the various ways we can contribute to change, whether through activism, humanitarian work, education, or simply spreading awareness. Each of us has a role to play. Some of us may be skilled in raising funds for those affected, while others might be better at educating their local communities or reaching out to political representatives. Some may use social media as a tool to share the truth and raise awareness. Every action, no matter how small it seems, contributes to a larger movement of solidarity and justice. We cannot become disheartened by setbacks or the enormity of the situation. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, faced unimaginable trials and hardships, yet he continued with unwavering hope and trust in Allah's plan. We are following in his footsteps. We will encounter obstacles, we will face criticism, and we may sometimes feel that our efforts aren't making a difference. But remember, our actions are not in vain. Allah sees every effort, every dua, and every tear shed for the sake of our brothers and sisters, and ultimately, success is granted by Him, not by the immediate outcomes we see. This is a long road, one that requires us to keep our faith strong and our spirits high. We must remind ourselves and each other that the struggle for justice and the defense of the oppressed are forms of worship. When we speak out against injustice, support the oppressed, and strive for what is right, we are fulfilling our duties as Muslims. This is part of our service to Allah, and it brings us closer to Him. So as we move forward, let's carry this responsibility with dignity and hope. Let's use our voices 
our platforms, and our actions to push for change. Let's remember that while the oppressors may seem strong now, Allah is the most powerful and his justice is inevitable. Our job is to stand firm, to continue the struggle, and to never lose sight of the fact that Allah's help is near. And for our brothers and sisters who have suffered, who have lost their homes, and who have given their lives, we make dua for them. We pray that Allah grants them the highest ranks in Jannah, that their sacrifices are rewarded infinitely, and that their suffering becomes a means of mercy for the entire Ummah. For those who remain, we pray for their patience and steadfastness, so that they may continue to hold on to their faith amidst the trials they face. In the end, let's keep reminding ourselves that our ultimate hope lies not in this world, but in the hereafter. Jana is the ultimate reward, the place where every pain, every injustice, and every sorrow will be wiped away. Until that day comes, we must remain strong, support one another, and continue to strive for justice with unshakable faith in Allah's plan. May Allah guide us, protect us, and make us a source of strength for our brothers and sisters around the world. Amin.